Good morning, everyone. I am out for a little quick, brisk walk. Um, I'm gonna be going to um, a meeting with some moms and educators later on this morning before I start my telemedicine. And so I literally only had 20 minutes. And so I'm gonna do part of a walk right now. And then later on today, I'm going to finish that so I can get a total of four miles today. But I very quickly wanted to discuss um, a question that one of my patients brought up to me um, last week in clinic. She was an initial consult and she wanted to know, good morning. Good morning. She wanted to know, you know, how successful is this surgery really? She was a really, really sweet patient. She'd struggled all of her life with her, all of her life with her weight. She's done countless diets. She's logged calories. She's had trainers and she just was never able to have good long-term results. Like she might lose 40, 50 pounds and then it would come back on. Um, she says that she feels there are times when she's even starving herself and she just doesn't have any, any good long-term outcome. And she said, you know, if I have one of these surgeries, how is changing the size of my stomach gonna do anything? Because if I've gone weeks without really taking in that many calories, how is this different than if I have surgery? What, am I really gonna have success with this? Because she was really concerned just about making that final leap for having surgery. And so there were two things that I really brought up to her that are maybe three. So number one, yes, all of the surgeries are going to give you more feelings of restriction. Over time though, some of those feelings of restriction will change because initially your, the wall of your stomach is really rigid from the inflammatory response from you healing. And then over time that inflammation goes down. So there is a little bit more elasticity to your stomach, but the overall volume of your stomach is gonna be much, much smaller than um, before you had surgery. So while yes, you do have restriction, what we now know is that there are a number of metabolic pathways and downstream metabolic effects that happen because of this surgery, particularly with the gastric bypass, duodenal switch, and long limb bypass. We know just with how your body um, signals and how you process glucose, um, your fluctuations in insulin, just there are a variety of different pathways that are affected. And this can be most potently seen like, if I have a patient that has diabetes, they come in for surgery, and typically, if they've only been treated for eight years or less, when they leave the hospital, they're able to come off all their diabetes medicine. And so it's not like they've lost 20, 30 pounds when they leave the hospital. And it doesn't have anything to do with weight loss. So that is why we call these surgeries metabolic and bariatric, meaning there is a, oh my goodness, I look like the wrath of God. Um, that means that it's bariatric, meaning that you lose weight, but that metabolic component is how your body processes foods and all the numerous different pathways um, that we have in our digestive system with how we utilize um, energy. And so I feel like trying to explain it to her that way that it's not just I'm making your stomach small. I think that that was really helpful for her. And I think also, ooh, the sun is right at my back. I apologize. Um, I think the other thing that I was able to explain to her is that more recently there was a large meta-analysis review. And what that means is somebody went through all the literature and looked at number of different studies, 20, 30 different studies, and looked at all the data so that they can compile and kind of summarize everything that um, the different researchers had found. And I think it was really pleasing to see that even though the number might seem a little bit high, I think it still really gives patients a lot of hope. So when they looked at the long-term success rates of bariatric surgery, what they were finding is that at the seven and 11 year mark, about 70% of patients are still able to keep off 50% of their excess weight. So what that means is if I have a patient that comes in to see me and they have 100 pounds of excess weight, that means that in seven to 10 years, the vast majority of people, like 70% of people, are able to keep off 50 pounds.
So, because at 50% of 100. And so I feel like not only are the surgeries able to give you good short-term results, meaning some upfront weight loss, you are also going to have the benefit of all the resolution and remission of your health problems. I'm going to be making another short video on um, the impact of bariatric surgery on diabetes and remission rates and things like that. But bariatric surgery has certainly been shown to really help patients whenever they have high blood pressure, diabetes, PCOS, uh, issues with fertility, all of these things. So it's not just weight loss. I often will tell my patients, if you didn't lose a pound, and even though you will, you're still going to get the benefit from all the resolution of your health problems and these health problems going into remission. So if you are on the fence about bariatric surgery, I think the first thing to know is that it's safe. And the second thing you need to know is that it's very effective. And if you've struggled all of your life with your weight, or maybe you were at one point active, maybe you had an injury and you now are unable to exercise and you just find that now at this point in your life, you're struggling with your weight. I want you to know that bariatric surgery is a very good, viable and effective option in meeting your weight loss goals. So I hope that this helped you guys. Y'all take care.